In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about working with operators and ket states when we're in the matrix representation. So for this, I'm only going to be talking about two by two operators, which is what we would need to do if we're working in the spin one half system. So you might see something written like this. Remember that we use a capital letter to denote an, a matrix, and here it's going to be an operator. So we have an operator, and we're going to talk a little bit in this video and a subsequent video about what that means. Uh, an operator applied to a state. And we have to ask the question, well, what is that going to do? Now, even if you have no idea what an operator is, no idea what a ket state is, you know how to work with this. This is a two by two matrix applied to our column vector. So what this looks like is multiplication. And we can ask the question, well, what are we going to get? Are we going to get a scalar? Are we going to get a vector, a row, or a column, or another matrix? So when we do out this math, we can see what we get. We're going to have a row times a column, then a row times a column. So this is going to look like another column vector. And just to write it out really concretely, we have A11. Remember, this sort of notation uh, denotes the individual entries of the matrix. So A11 multiplied by alpha 1, that's an alpha, plus A12 multiplied by alpha 2. And that's that first entry. That second entry is then A21 multiplied by alpha 1 plus A22 multiplied by alpha 2. So we get another cat. So I could write this, for instance, as beta. We get a new state. Now, something that's interesting to note is that this wouldn't actually work um, particularly well if we tried to do it the other way. So if we had you know, four elements here and then a row, right? It would be like, OK, you know, row times column, row times column row times column, row times column. We end up getting a different type of element. So in fact, we're not going to do this. In general, you're not going to see what this would have been is, for instance, an operator B applied to a ket state, I don't know, zeta. Right? We're, we're often not going to do this. So focus right now on this sort of a form, where our operator is to the left of our ket state, um, we would have a very different form if our operator was to the left of our bra state. So we're not doing that. This is what we're doing. So where this then gets interesting is when our operators actually re represent certain measurements and when this represents obviously certain spin states. So we can ask, what does this state end up being if we have a certain type of measurement and a certain type of spin state? And what separate videos will talk about is a special case where we ask the question, does it become some scalar coefficient times our original ket state? So a special situation is that you take your operator, apply it to your ket state, and in fact you get a scalar times our original ket state. And it's quite normal to even like label these in a way that are related to one another. And this is the idea of eigenvalues and eigenvectors of our operator. And again, in linear algebra, that's just the idea of eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix. So there will be other videos to unpack that fully. Here I just wanted to take that idea of operator followed by ket is just going to be executed by this matrix multiplication. And so this final thing, we could write this as beta 1 and beta 2. And then you get to set this thing equal to beta 1, this thing equal to beta 2, and then just solve arithmetically if you're trying to find some specific values. And again, in later videos, we'll see why we would want to do that. 